welcome to my video. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about a little bit of things here. Um, I want to basically just address that I'm going to probably be testing out Nix OS. Now, I know some people may have put in comments that, oh, Nix OS is annoying or it's just, it's not, it's not a, a real Linux desktop or it's different. It is different. But it's still Linux. It's still using GNU Linux on it. It's just different. Um, it's constructed differently. Just like Atomic Desktop and Fedora, it's not like your traditional Linux either. Um, these in, immutable desktops or, or OS systems are pretty interesting. And I don't know, it sounds like this could be the future of Linux going forward. So I don't know. It just seems like this is like a good idea how the system works. And like I, I like the idea of Nix OS in a way. I know I like I question a lot, and I'm like, nah, it doesn't sound like a cool system. Or eh, it just sounds like overrated because people it's just popular and people like it because you know because you know it, it's trending. Like everybody just likes it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's uh, it's popular. But it's popular for a reason, right? When you have a system that's popular, like Arch Linux, Arch Linux used to be like one of the popular Linux systems, right? Um, so, um, but there's, there's a reason why people like Arch Linux because it, it is a pretty good system, right? I actually use it a lot. It's like my main system and it's something I used for like for many years. I also even made a distro spin based on Arch Linux which um, was originally based on Debian uh, stable. Um, then I switched over to <laughs> Arch Linux because uh, I, I love Arch Linux. Um, but um, the reason why that my, my Toxite Linux distribution started off with um, Debian was just playing around with uh, this program called Rescue CD or something like that. I don't know. Um, it, used to, it used to be a good way of like making your own your own remix of Debian systems. Um, you could also use, uh, it was like a system, system, rescue system, CD, whatever, but it's like a program. Basically what it did, like you could make your own customized uh, Linux distribution, which had a, a GUI installer and also a, a, a command line installer as well. So it was pretty cool. Um, but I basically switched over to Arch Linux in the past. Um, because I really like the way Arch ISO worked and um, I love like just customizing it. It was just a lot easier. Now, well, it was a little bit harder like compared to like the Debian, the Debian way of doing things. But uh, the way I liked about uh, it was more customizable is what I wanted to say. Yeah, it was a little bit harder, but it was more customizable, more flexible. That way that I had more freedom just to customize it exactly the way I wanted to. I also like the, the whole idea was to uh, actually install an Arch Linux system on on your computer system easier than compared to just doing it manually because back then before they had Arch install um, that the only way to install Arch Linux was a, a manual way which was the Arch way um, so I basically just took that and made an installer out of it by by doing things in dialogue and bash scripts yeah that that was that that was really fun <laughs> um actually i should have just wrote it in c it probably been a lot easier because bash programming is not always easy but it was it was interesting dialogue dialogue is pretty cool um anyways um so basically what i'm trying to say is that uh um yeah i like arch linux a lot but um, I really want to play around with Nix OS because it, it seems like an interesting system. It, it, it like reminds me of like what Arch Linux was in the past. It's this unique system. It, I think it's rolling. I think it can be rolling. I think you can use the latest Linux kernel on it. So I think you can use the latest software. I'm not sure how it really works, but I, I think it's kind of like Gentoo in a way where you can have it to be like, you know, bleeding edge, like roll and release kind of style. Uh, and you can actually have it kind of like stable as well. I don't really know much about NixOS, but I'm just assuming that's how it is. Um, so what I'm planning to do is basically test it out in a virtual machine. I need to install some kind of virtual machine program, which I don't have any installed yet. 
Uh, I don't know what I'm going to go with. So if any recommendation of a virtual machine uh, software, let me know. And, uh, and I'll, ch I'll check them all out that you guys recommend. And I'll find which one works better for me. But I, us I usually use Open uh, VirtualBox. But um, I know there's people saying there's a lot of different other like virtual machine programs out there that's actually pretty good. So just let me know what's, what's you know, like, I don't know. I don't really do my virtualization like I used to in the past. So I don't really know what's good. I used to use KVM back in the day. It was pretty good. There's what, Vert, Vert, Vert Manager? And there's uh, boxes, and then you got you got Docker if you want to go over that route. And also, you can also use NextOS within an operating system because um, NextOS is basically kind of like a package manager and an operating system all in one, right? Like how it works is that it, it works off a configuration file, and basically, like when you install NextOS onto a hard drive, what it does it, it puts this configuration file called Nix, uh, configuration .nix, and basically that's how you uh, you put all your applications in there and um, and it will basically if things go wrong it will always go back to that configuration file that you have and revert and all the programs that you have in that configuration file will will, will put back the system with those programs back as it is with that config it'll put your system back according to your configuration file but there is also a thing called home manager which Basically, I think it, it puts your configuration and all your dots and all that into another uh, configuration file, which probably I think is called home.nix, which you add yourself. And basically, um, I, I don't know really how, how home manager works, but like, it's, it's, I, I guess and I'm thinking that's, that's how it is. Uh, so basically, like how that works is that you basically set up home manager and, um, and what it does is basically keeps all your dot files and basically your home directory. Uh, it restores your home directory basically, kind of like what you know Deja Dup does, like the program when you restore it. That's what I use. But this seems like to be like all integrated as one. So like if you do have like Home Manager and Nix OS, and something goes wrong with your system, it'll put it back to the default state. That's what that's what an immutable system is. It'll never break. If something breaks, it does put it back. It migrates back to to your configuration file, and it'll just pick something back to exactly your configuration file. So it'll always keep your system that that configuration. Like um, let's say, like you know, you have like a, your traditional Linux system, and it breaks down. You got to troubleshoot it. You get, it'll go to like Grub Rescue or whatever bootloader you're using. It'll, it'll like you sometimes you're down. Sometimes you get to the prompt. And you're like, what do I do? Like, how to fix this and all this stuff. Like, what's good about immutable system is that basically if something breaks. What it does, it will just resort back to your configuration file, and it'll actually go back to the state where your computer was working good before that update. It, it, it I don't know how exactly the package manager works, but um, I'm not really how you go by updating the system as well, but. I will figure all that out, but I'm, I'm really gonna test around with it. I'm gonna do some research on it. But I am really interested in Nix OS, and I know a lot of people may find it kind of annoying, and it's not like your traditional Linux system, but it seems quite interesting. Like I, I see why it's popular uh, among people that are using it, and um, I, I think it's interesting. Like I'm gonna give it a shot. I know like there's people like trying. Linux from scratch and all these other systems. I, I, I have done Linux from scratch in the past and I don't want to go down that route again. I mean, I do appreciate Linux from scratch and I do get the whole idea of Linux from scratch. It's very customization and, you know, like it's, it's actually total freedom. You, you you make your system exactly the way you want it to make it, which is cool. But I prefer a distribution personally. <laughs> but Cru uh, Crux. Not, 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 not Crux Linux. I don't want to talk about Crux Linux. I have used that in the past as well. It's not too bad of a system. Anyways, um, I meant to say, uh, I don't know why I say Crux. Um, I meant to say Nix OS. Seems pretty interesting. Well, Crux is an interesting system as well. It's very much like FreeBSD, to be honest. But um, that's not a story, not a topic. I'm not even sure if it's, it's, it's still active, but I'm not sure if it's still like productive, like it's being like, maintain or whatever but it is active so crux is pretty interesting system our songs is highly inspired by crux a lot um so so that is that i think it, i think 
Crux is newer than Arch, so I don't even know because Crux came out in the same year. I don't know, but Arch is inspired by Crux. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is that uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be get, giving uh, Nick's OS a go and uh, give it a shot. And a virtual machine, by the way. Um, I uh, I plan to take out. I have Windows on a, on a hard drive on both of my Linux computers and. Um, I want to take out Windows and basically put another Linux system. Uh, I was thinking of doing a Gen 2, but uh, I don't want to go on Gen 2. I like Gen 2, but I think NixOS would be an interesting system. Um, so I want to learn flakes and all that stuff with the system. So it, it seems quite interesting. It doesn't seem that complicated. Once you really uh, work with the system and you understand, you know, how the system works, I think it'd be a, a good system to use. Um, I, I might actually like it a lot, but I'm going to I'm gonna give it a shot, give it, give it a go. And, uh, I don't know when the video, when I'll make my next video, but my next, next, <laughs> whoa, I can't, I can't talk. So my next video will probably be a Nix OS video. Um, so I'll be doing it in a virtual machine. What I'm planning to do is do a little bit of research on it and just basically set it up in a virtual machine on, on a screencast. And uh, basically an Arch Linux user, you know, running uh, NixOS and, and try to configure it as best as they can um, just by playing around with the system and just a little bit of knowledge of the system and try to try to set it up you know, without anybody's help really and just sort of just do it yourself kind of thing approach and I'll just make a video on it. It's not gonna be like any edits. I don't edit my videos. My, my videos are always raw. <laughs> so I'll probably do a lot of mistakes and stuff and probably will piss a lot of people off. But I like, these, I like doing these kind of videos because I just like to just show, you know, you know, a real average Linux user just basically how they are. Cause I'm not gonna say I'm professional. I ain't gonna say I'm like I know everything. Cause I don't. But I am well aware of Linux. I've been around using Linux for what 24 years. It's nothing, something to brag about. But I've been using it for a long time, and I never really used much Unix system when I was a kid. I used mostly Windows and MS DOS, so I'm not really too familiar with Unix back then, though. I did use some Unix a little bit, like uh, some BSD Unix and uh, CPM DOS. I don't consider that as Unix, but it's kind of interesting. I, I also used uh, Darwin a little bit in the past with Open Darwin in the late 90s. And I used, so I used BSD and, uh, BSD. Yeah, I did use some BSD in the early 2000s. Um, like, like FreezeB and uh, NetBSD I used a little bit. and. But around the same time I was getting to in Linux, I was using a little bit of BSD as well. Um, but I find BSD was uh, not as user friendly as as to uh, Linux, uh, especially like Canopics was pretty user friendly. Um, Canopics and um, Fedora. I never used Fedora in two thousand three. Fedora was actually one of the systems that actually made me uh, stick around with Linux for a long time, to be honest. It was, as much as I don't use it much anymore, and I don't want really where it's headed in the philosophy of Fedora, but back then, like, Fedora was pretty cool. Um, but, uh, same as Ubuntu was, was pretty interesting. Ubuntu was actually pretty good back then. Now with all the snaps and everything, I know people. Some people like the snaps, and I don't want to get into it. But personally, it's not something for me. I don't like it personally. Okay, it's me. It's a me thing. It's nothing to do with Snap itself. I just don't like it myself. I don't like Snap, so that's why I don't use uh, Ubuntu. But if people like it, like I'm happy for you. You guys like using that system. That's great. I, I'm a, I'm an Arch Linux user. You know, I love Arch Linux, and I love Arch Linux because it sort of reminds me of like BSD a lot because it takes a lot of inspiration from Crux, and Crux takes a lot of inspiration from FreeBSD, and um, because uh, Crux actually has a port system to be honest, uh, it's very similar to FreeBSD. It, it, it is actually, um, but Arch Linux kind of takes some parts of it. It's not entirely like BSD, but it does. You can see like it's inspired a little bit by BSD a little bit, 
into the system. And that's one thing I like about Arsenal. Arsenal is just pretty cool. But Nix OS looks pretty interesting, and I'm really interested in Nix OS. And uh, I will be giving it a, sh a try. Let me know what kind of virtual machine program I should check out or what's really good. I, I like VirtualBox because I know it's, 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 it's I use it VirtualBox. So it's, it's a good, it's a good virtual machine program, but I'm sure there's, there's a lot of better ones out there. I used to use VMware as well. I heard that VM, VMware Pro, Workstation Pro now is uh, free for non-commercial use, or so I heard. Um, but, um, well, it's, <laughs> there's Vert Manager. Uh, there's QEMU, KVM, uh, I don't know. Let me know what's, what you guys think is good or just drop it down in the comments. I'll check them out. But for the most part, I probably just use VirtualBox because that's something I use a lot. I don't even have any virtual machine program on, installed yet. I hadn't been testing out any other Linux and I tried like not to disho hop at all. But I want to try out NixOS because it, it's, it's it's different and that's what that's why i'm trying it out because it's a different system and it seems interesting more likely i know a lot of people are like oh i don't like the philosophy at all and i don't like you know what before judging a system try it out that's all i gotta say and i i am that's how i always been like i i was questioning i was like eh, you know but i am i mean i am interested in, in nix os i've been I've been kind of like pulling it back, like oh, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna stick with Arch, and that's it. But I really, I really like the the idea of NixOS. I like, I like how it is. It sounds very interesting. I, I don't know. I, I want to play around with it. <laughs> I got, I got, I gotta set it up. I got, I gotta, I gotta find out what kind of system it is, how it works, and why people like it, and. I want to understand it and that way I can make my judgment like do I like it is it for me or is it not for me so I will do a video on that of me playing around an Arslanx user playing around with NixOS and trying out for the first time and I'll make a video of doing that in a virtual machine and um, yeah and I'll, the whole video will just be me Play around with NixOS. I'll try not to make it too too long either, but it might be long. <laughs> so uh, get ready for that. I'll probably be the next video I'll be doing. I'll be working all week, so I'll I'll, I'll see if I can find some time doing that. But anyways, guys, once again, I appreciate all the new subscribers coming to my channel. That's great. I really appreciate like people tuning in, watching my videos, and actually enjoying my videos. I appreciate the comments. I do my best to to reply back to everybody. I appreciate everybody. I, I appreciate you guys coming in and tuning in and watching my videos. Uh, I hope I hope you know you guys get entertained by it or whatnot. And I do this for fun. I don't I don't make any money off this. I don't I don't do this to you know like I don't edit my videos. I keep everything raw. I just I just. Turn the microphone on and just, you know, just speak my mind out. And that's basically what my channel always been about. It's always been like that since since I've been doing YouTube. So uh, just want to say thanks to everybody. And um, so until next time, guys, uh, you'll probably be seeing me playing around with NixOS. So get ready for that, guys. Anyways, hope you guys have a, have a good night, a good day, or a good morning. Where you guys are from in the world that's watching this video. Anyways, thanks for the watch. Cheers.